Hi, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be making a very basic website using HTML and CSS. So the layout of this website is we have our navigation bar on the left. We have a title bar on the top here, along with some social media links. So each links really don't do anything. They basically just go to the Facebook page or to the x.com or to linkedin.com. So it's just a demonstration on how to create external links. Uh, we have a block of images here. That's basically just demonstrating what this website contains. And this is our main homepage information, along with two videos embedded from YouTube. You can also notice that there's a footer uh, link here. Yeah, so just to demonstrate how to create these things, that basically makes the website inter interlinked between the pages available. So these are the remaining pages. We have our motherboard web uh, motherboard page for this website. Uh, motherboard page basically has three images and some information about motherboards. The CPU page is using a block display system uh, where we actually display an image inside of each block with some text. Uh, similarly with the GPU, in the GPU page we are moving the images to the right hand side and still displaying the text inside of a, the blocks. And we're using the left hand side for the RAM. And then the contact page is creating a field of information the users can enter into and basically put the name, email address and object and basically click submit to send the email obviously this is just for demonstration purposes so this is not a functional contact page uh, this tutorial is aimed at people who are trying to learn basic html and css and i'm going to show you how to create this simply using visual studio code okay so before we begin the tutorial first thing i would like you guys to do is to download the uh, zip file from the link in the description it will have all the images and the text files that we actually need for this website. So let me just show you what's in the assets here. So I have an images folder. Inside of the images folder, you have the CPU images, Facebook logo, GPU images, um, Twitter X logo, LinkedIn logo, uh, motherboard images, and the images for the RAM. Okay. And then uh, after that, we also have the text files. So inside the text files, I've included all the um, write ups or the CPU, GPU, motherboard, homepage, everything. So we're just gonna copy and paste information from there and then put it into the website and arrange it so it can be displayed properly. Okay, with this done, let's go ahead and um, start up our Visual Studio Code. Okay, so here I have my Visual Studio Code. With Visual Studio Code now loaded, create a, a new folder on your desktop or in your documents folder or on your OneDrive folder where you can basically just name it to something that's unique to other folders right so you just na i named mine basic web tutorial inside of there i basically downloaded the zip file and then extracted them so i have the txt folder and the images folder okay and we just need to drag and drop that folder into our visual studio code okay i can click on yes i can trust the author right so at the moment it has got access to let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see better so right now we have got access to the zip file, txt file, and the images file. Right? So if I click on the um, txt files, you can see the text files there. And by default, uh, Visual Studio Code is not going to wrap the text around the screen. So you can see the text is going on the horizontal direction. So you can press Alt-Z to wrap the text around. So it's a lot easier for you to read if you need to read from top to bottom. Right, that's a CPU on GPU home. Yep, that's fine. So not in any of the folders. I'm gonna right click on the empty space right here. Okay, so right here on Visual Studio Code. Okay, if I right click here and then say say new file, my first file is going to be called index.html. That's my first file I'm creating. Second one I'm gonna create is gonna be called cpu.html. Then I will create another one called gpu.html. Then ram.html. Okay, so we have our index, CPU, GPU, RAM. We also need the motherboard. Motherboard.html. And then lastly, we're gonna need our contact page. Let's say contact.html. So don't forget to put the .html in the end because .html will determine what type of page this is. Okay, so we'll zoom out of this now and then go into the folder. So as you can see, now all that we created in Visual Studio Code, files will be created here. We're going to start off with the index page. So I'm just going to keep that one open 
on Google Chrome. So every now and again, I can refresh the page and see what kind of stuff we're adding. Okay, so to start off, let's create a doc type. So I'm just going to say doc type HTML. The nice thing about um, Visual Studio Code is that it does allow you to do autocomplete. So right now I just um, did a less than sign and then it gave me lots of options, right? And then because I've had doc type selected, I just press tab on the keyboard and then it completed the tag for me. So it will do uh, stuff like this most of the time and it does help speed up your process of coding. Second one, I need to do HTML. So I'm just going to write HTML and then press tab. And then it will do a open uh, tag and a close tag for the HTML. Everything for the HTML page needs to go in between those tags. So we just need to space it out like so. Okay. And inside of the HTML page, we're going to first start off with the head. Okay. So that's the head part of the HTML. Okay. So we have our open and close. Inside of there, we'll say title. Okay. So the title is basically shows up. On the right now, it says index.html, but if we type a title in somewhere and then save it, you'll see what that does. So I'm just going to call this one computer hardware website homepage. Okay. I'm just going to save that. And then if I refresh, you'll see that it changes here. There's computer hardware website homepage. Okay. Now going back to the title again, we also need to create a CSS file. So I'm going to click on the slide here again. Okay, and then I'm going to say new file. And this one, this time I'm going to create a style.css. So CSS file and HTML files, they work hand in hand because HTML contains a skeleton of your website and CSS um, collects all the styles and the positions of the objects that you're going to put into the website as in like, you know, the colors, backgrounds, um, if you want to position the navigation bar on the top, left, right, bottom, etc. Okay, now that the style sheet has been created, we can actually link it to this page. A link. And then you can see in Visual Studio Code, it actually gives you the you CSS one here. I'm just going to select the CSS and press tab. And inside the link is basically is a rel, so it's a relative to the style sheet, and then href where the style sheet is um, saved. So I called mine style.css and he has found so even if I control and click that one it will go to this um style sheet um file here. Okay so that's all been linked. Let's go and so now we don't need to use the head tag anymore. We've got two tags there that's perfectly fine. Now let's create a body tag. So head tag are the stuff that you can't necessarily see other than the title. So if you have any other JavaScript files, the CSS files to add, you can add it to here, or you can write the CSS directly inside of the head tag. Inside the body tag is what we actually see on the page. Okay. So if I just type, um, say, if I just type hello from the future here, and then. Um, go to the page, right? Someone's so on the page here. If I refresh, and it just basically shows hello from the future. So everything that's in the body is in is going to show up in the white part here, and anything in the t um, basically in the head part, uh, other than the title, we can't really see anything else because the style sheet needs to be loaded in the head head because it will load up the styles and everything else that's associated with the elements inside of the body. Okay, so if we go back to uh, the index page. I'm just going to delete that for now. So we're going to be separating the body tag using divs. So divs are basically like divisions that you can create inside of a uh, page. Divs are on its own. You can't really see it because it's basically like an invisible box, which then can be sized, resized, and positioned all around the page. Okay, let's go ahead and create a div here first. So it's giving me a suggestion for div. I press tab. I complete that one. So this is going to be our main div, right? So I'm just going to give it an ID for main. And ID is what we're going to use to style it in the style sheet. Okay. So each element that we're going to create, we're going to either give it an ID or a class, right? So the way this one is going to work at the moment is if I go to the style sheet right now, and if I type in, say, for example, um, hashtag say hashtag main so this is the way we're going to identify the um, div that we just created now right and then you do the two curly brackets to start and end the style rules for this div ok 
okay so let's give it a width of say 100 pixels right height of 100 pixels and then background color red okay right now we created a very empty div okay with the height and width of it if we go back to the page you can see it's created a square okay and if i take away that here for any reason at the moment the div still exists in the page right so it still exists here but because we're not, refer we're not referencing the main anymore it's not styling it so that's how the style sheets actually okay i'm just going to delete that from here for now and we'll come back to the style sheet a little bit later on okay so inside of the main part is where all of our elements are going to go in so first we're going to create a div here and this one i'm going to give it an id called header okay so this is going to be the header part of the website where we'll basically have a h1 which is the largest header okay, i'm going to call it computer hardware website okay and basically at the moment if we go back here and then you can see it basically shows up like this so that's the header element right inside of the header element we will also have the social media buttons right and then the social media buttons will be linked externally to their website and i'll show you how to do that so i'm going to do another div inside of here let me get jason to that so it doesn't go too far into the page i'll give this one an id called social so then we can style it in the style sheet okay and in between the div we're going to first start with an a i'm going to press tab okay and then it finishes that so basically i'm looking for a hyperlink reference to something and then that's the end tag so if you want to um hyperlink a word you can do it through like this so basically https let's go to www.facebook.com okay so right now this hyperlink is going to go to https so anytime you notice it's http or https or ftp it knows it's an external link it's going to go to the external page well, when we want to link to a um, local page, I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on as well. And now we need to have some sort of content inside of that link. So if I just type in Facebook here for now, okay, and we just go and refresh that page. As you can see, there's a link that exists for Facebook at the moment. Okay, so if I click on that link, it will simply go to the Facebook website. Okay, that's how we create external links. Now, instead of a link, uh, instead of a text link, what we want to do is we want to create an image link, right? So I'll just press enter. So the A tag is on the bottom here. Inside of the A tag, I'm going to go and create an image tag. Okay. And then I just press tab and it completed the tag for me. So inside the image tag, you have two uh, properties. One is for the source or the file, which one you want to display to the screen. And the alt text. So alt text is for whatever reason. If this um, image doesn't show, uh, you can write down exactly what uh, what the image is. Okay. So our images are saved inside the images folder, and mine's called Facebook.jpg. So it's basically just a Facebook logo. Okay. Say Facebook. Sorry, uh, images. Facebook.jpg, and then alt text. Let me just say Facebook for now. Okay, and then if I go back to the browser, refresh, so as you can see, the Facebook logo shows up. And if I click on it, it will go to the Facebook website. Okay, so I'm going to do the same for X and LinkedIn. I'm just going to copy and paste this actually, okay, and then paste it twice. Okay, and this is going to be x.com. Okay, so I think it was called x.jpg. Okay, and now x.jpg is there, and this one's going to be x slash twitter okay and then the other link is going to be linked in.com and then i have the linkedin image linkedin as well okay all right now i've got all three of my links there and then if i refresh the page you can see all three images are showing up and they should go to the designated website okay great so that's just like if you have your own profile to share 
you can share it on the same link. So this link can be anything that you want. It could be like google.com. It could be your own Facebook page or a Twitter account or your LinkedIn profile. Okay. So with that, with these three done, we can now get out of the header and work on the navigation. <laughs> now, mind you, we are still inside of the main div here. Okay. So um, we are still inside of the main div. Okay, we need to remain inside of that in order to make sure that everything stays structured. Okay, so that's the header. And here, yeah, so social ends there. Okay, great. So now we can go ahead and get out of this one. Okay, so now outside this, this um, header div at the moment, we're going to go ahead and create our navigation. So I'm going to create another div here. And give an ID. Let's give an ID called nav. Okay, so navbar. Okay, instead of here, we're going to use something called a unordered list. So basically, we're going to call, uh, we're going to use a ul tag. Okay, inside of the ul tag, put the slash there. So inside of the ul tag, we can now put in a bunch of list items. Okay, so the list items are going to be, so we're going to do l li first. And inside of there, now we can also put a um, hyperlink. Okay, so we're going to do A. All right, so we have the list first, and then the A, right? And then the href here, basically the first one is going to be for the home page. We're going to directly link to the index.html. And then outside of the uh, link tag here, I'm going to call it home. Okay, so that's my list, first list item. All right, so if I go back here, you can see that my first list item is there. And if I click on that page, it's still in the index page there, right? Okay, we can do it again, li, a again. Okay, and this time we're gonna call the motherboard page. Okay, and let's name this one motherboard, like so. Okay, and let's do li again, a, href, this one we're gonna be CPU cpu.html and then we're going to go call this one just a cpu page like so okay uh, let's do another one here a href gpu cpu.html call it gpu and then we need to do a a again this one is ram.html and then we call it ram let's do all caps Okay, and last one is going to be for the contact href contact.html. And then I'm just going to say contact us. It looks nice. Okay, so if I go back to here, we can see if I click on that page, it has gone to the motherboard page because I can see the motherboard HTML has been loaded. Because the page is empty, I just have to click back to come back to this one. GPU, GPU, RAM, and contact us. Okay, so we're getting the elements in there nicely. All right, so that's all we need for the nav bar. Okay, uh, another thing that we actually need to do for the nav bar is to have something called a class. Okay, so I'm going to call it a class called active. So in the other example, what you've seen was whenever a navigation bar is active, so when we are on that page, if you're on the home page, I want the home button to be different color than the rest of them. When you go to the GPU page, I want the GPU color to be different than the rest of them. So it gives the user a visual feedback on which page they're on. Uh, some website, websites actually use stuff like breadcrumbs and navigation sitemaps and so on. But this is a simple way to do it. So because it's only have six pages. Or so. Okay, so now let's get out the nav div here. Okay. And now we're going to do the one for the content. So the content is going to be the biggest div in the website because it's going to contain all the elements for that website. Okay, so I'm going to give it a div. A div here. Give an ID called content. Okay, let's go inside of this one now. Make some space. Okay, so we're going to do another div here. And then we'll give an ID or title so every page will have a title and then inside of this one we're going to do h2 called computer hardware website okay and we're going to style all of this using the css so then you'll know exactly how and 
what it looks like. Okay, so um, in the content page, each page is going to have their own content. So uh, we just want to create the skeleton at the moment so I can copy and paste it to the other pages. Again, I'll show you what else you need to change. Okay, so after the content, we're going to create another div over here called footer. Okay, so we'll give an ID of footer. Okay, and inside of here, uh, we are basically not going to create the, the links again, but we're going to, uh, instead of doing it in a list, we want to do it all in one line. Okay, so it's a lot easier for people to, uh, when they're scrolled to the bottom of the page, they don't have to scroll back up to the top of the page to go to a different page. Okay, it just adds a little bit more accessibility to the, um, uh, to the website. Okay, so we're going to start off with an A. Okay, let's go with the A and say index.html. So this is our home page, right? You want to do two space and a pipe symbol. Okay, so your pipe symbol is uh, if you're using a UK keyboard, your pipe symbol is going to be next to the shift on the left. So you do shift and then the pipe symbol there. If you're using a US keyboard, your pipe symbol is above the enter key. I'm just going to do pipe symbol there and then do two more spaces, do another A. And in this case, I'm going to say motherboard html okay, this might get long so i'm gonna do alt z so it wraps my text i can type a lot a little bit easier okay so this one's gonna be called motherboard after that do two spaces type two more spaces a again cpu to html call this one cpu two more spaces type two more spaces again then a again here then gpu HTML for the GPU, two spaces, pipe symbol, two spaces again, A, and then um, we're going to do RAM, RAM, all uppercase, two spaces, pipe symbol, and then two spaces again. And lastly, we'll do the contact page. Okay, so just say contact us. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So, at the end of every one of these tags, we just put in two spaces there, and then we're putting the new tag inside of them. Okay, so we've got our motherboard, CPU, GPU, RAM, and contact us along with the home page. Okay, let's see what all of this looks like now. All right, so our content H2 is showing up here alongside with our um, footer navigation bar here. So uh, that's all going to go to the same pages again, but that's fine. So right now you have got a completed skeleton for a page. We, we have the um, header, uh, content, uh, header, main, navigation, content, and the footer. Okay. So most of the oh, rest of the pages will follow the similar design as this one. So what I want to do now is I want to basically copy and paste the skeleton onto the other pages so we don't have to retype it again. Okay, and we're just going to change a bunch of stuff in the other pages as well. So, you know, it's a lot easier to style it up afterward. So, control A, control C, copy. Let's go to the CPU page, pasting this to the CPU page first. Okay, um, let's change the title first to CPU page. Okay, and then we're going to change H2 to say, what is a CPU? Okay. Let's go to the GPU page. And one more thing to change here as well. So we don't want to have that active anymore. We want to have the CPU one active now. Okay, so I'm removing the active from the index page and putting the class active into the CPU page here. Okay, great. I'm going to copy CPU page. Go to GPU. I think I already pasted it here. Oh, that's fine. And then this one title, I'm going to change it to GPU page. So I'm changing that in the head here. And then we don't have to change anything there. We can change that over as well to the GPU section now. GPU before that, and then just put a space next to it. So class active GPU. And then here, we're going to change the H2. Say, what is a GPU? Okay. Copy all of this, 
go to the RAM website, RAM page. Let's go to RAM page here. Um, let's change the active from GPU to RAM now. Okay. And then lastly, what is a RAM? And then we have motherboard. I'm going to copy all of this again. Scroll up to motherboard page. Okay, change the active from RAM to motherboard. Okay, and then what is a motherboard, right? And lastly, we need to do the contact page. So I'm going to say, instead of H to saying, what is a motherboard? They contact us. I think my what is a WH. is fine it's okay and then just change the active from back at the contact page html just change the active to contact our html so that way we can change that in the style sheet okay let's see so all the pages should have a navigation bar now so as you can see i'm on the motherboard page now it changes it there and it should also change you on the title there so it's a motherboard page cpu gpu ram Conduct us now because we have the uh, style sheet linked to each page, right? So the same style sheet is linked to each page. Um, therefore, we don't have to separately style any of the pages. We can put all the styles for each of the pages inside of the style sheet. Okay, so we can start off basically by um, styling it first, I think, a little bit, and then we can start adding the content to it. So just to get the basics. Um, in first okay so um, i'm using a gradient on the website and the website i've used to generate the gradient was this one here so it's called css-gradients.com right so it kind of lets you just pick two random colors and um, you can put your gradients in there and once you've done it it actually lets you get the css for that and then once you get the css you can copy and paste into the um, body tag or um any other divs as well for the you know for the gradient to be basically applied okay for my one i think i still kept the url for it that's right so the one that we've used is this one here okay so it's a bit of a blue and green yellow right this is a nice little color combination yeah i'll have the links um on the website as well you can check it out and you can do uh, create your own gradients if you like uh, let's go ahead and first do the HTML and body. So we're just going to um, basically reset some of the stuff. Um, reset some of the stuff first, just to make sure that, you know, the website looks and feels exactly uh, exactly as we want it. So first, we're going to start off with height and just say 100% height. So whenever the page opens, we want a page to fill, it, fill up the, the whole, pa uh, whole browser. Okay. So we don't want the background to basically stop halfway halfway through or whatever the content ends so if the content ends here all of this will have the background and the rest of it will be white but we want the whole full page to have the background okay and then we will say color black uh, margin we're going to set that to zero so by default there are some margin and padding from um on the based on the uh, body and the html tag so we're just setting it to zero so our background actually it fits border to border just do a font family here and i think the one i chose was the lucidia sans yeah and i'm just picking it from the options that visual studio is giving me so if you have the same options here please choose that okay and then i'm going to now i can basically um paste the css from the website Okay, so once I click that one, it's going to say, yeah, it's copied. Come back to the style sheet and just paste it. And it'll give you the link for the website and the link for the one that we used. Okay, so right now we have got our gradients. If I go ahead and refresh the page, as you can see, because we used, oh, I clicked on it. Uh, because we used 100%, it 
it's actually filled in the whole page here okay now there are some issues i think as well so if i get this one to say 2000 pixels now very long it actually fills in all of it nicely which is great okay that's fine as long as it does that it's all good okay so now that's the that's for just the base so it's just setting up the background and such for it and now we're gonna go and target the header okay so we're gonna say header like so do open and close brackets okay and we're gonna set that one's display to block so we want it to basically be on its own on the section on the web page okay and let's give it a width of 100 percent. so we want it to fill in from horizontal locations height to 60 pixels okay so we don't want it to be too large on the screen and then we're going to give it a border bottom so at the bottom of the uh, div there should be a one pixel solid black border Okay, and we're gonna give it a position relative because the social buttons we need to move them to the right and we need to make them substantially small as well. Okay, and then we'll say padding to zero. All right, so if you look at that one for now, as you can see, right now there's a uh, there's a line here, and also somehow my uh, rest of my contents have disappeared. I think they've gone behind the images. Yeah, I can see them behind the images there. Well, that's fine. We can find them afterwards. Um, let's go ahead and deal with the H1 tag. So H1 tag is what's inside of the header. So inside of the header, we have a H1 tag before the social one. Right, so let's go to that one. So H1. And for H1, we just say padding and pixels. Right, so if you look at the way the header is now, it's too close to the top. So if we move it down a little bit, it looks like it's slightly in the middle. So a bit more aesthetically pleasing basically okay so now we're gonna go and do the social one the social okay so the social div we're gonna say position absolute all right so because the social div is inside of the header and this one is a positional relative we can move it anyway inside of that particular box okay so what we want to do is we want to move it to the right. So right 30 pixels. So 30 pixels to the right and top 10 pixels. Okay. So they will be moved over there, but we need to make them a lot smaller as well. Okay. So this is where we're going to go after the images. I'm going to call social div again. And this time I'm going to say social div image. So any image that is inside of the social divs here, we want to apply the properties from what we're going to write to that particular image. The display inline block, so they're basically in one line okay, with uh, 30 pixels, height 30 pixels, uh, margin 10 pixels. So basically, there's 10 pixel gap between the images, and then we also need to do a border radius because I want to make them turn them into like a round shape. Um, uh, round shape image so by doing a border radius 50 percent it will calculate the image height width and then it will create a circle around it okay so once i do that it's all there okay so so far we have our header sorted out right now with the buttons there we can also move them maybe slightly up as well uh, if we want to so we can say um height width is there top margin and pixels margin here i can change it to left and pixels and margin right 10 pixels let's try that that's fine oh yeah i think it's from the hyperlink but well, we'll sort the hyperlink out a little bit later on mm -hmm. Okay, I think if we need to do that, just say a um, X decoration none. Let's try that now, and then it's gone. Okay, so basically all the hyperlinks usually have a underline. So because that one um, is, these are hyperlinked, so for some 
um, because there's a space between them. You're just highlighting the spaces in between. Okay, that's fine. Um, but they all have ended here as well. So, okay, uh, we don't want the hyperlinks anyway, so that should work just as well. Okay, that's just a default rule for our website. Okay, now we need to do our navigation bar. Okay, so our navigation bar, the website is going to be split into two. The navigation bar is going to stay here. So this is, I'm going to line over here and then the content should move over here. Okay. So first I'm going to start with the navigation bar. Okay, nav. Okay, float. Left. Okay, so I'm going to make, it, make the div float left. Give it a width of 250 pixels and height 100 percent so as you can see now it's because we did a float left right and then the height and the width uh, our contact us um our, uh, content section has moved over here right now okay so right now it's starting to look the way we want it i think i'm zoomed in here which is fine okay we also want to make sure that um our box sizing actually works as well. So what I want to do is underneath the A bit here, I'm going to do a star. So star basically applies to everything. Okay. And we're going to say box sizing is equals to border box. Okay. The reason we're using a box sizing is because anytime we use um, padding or margin, we want that to be included with the height and width of the element. So that way it gives you much more accurate um, calculation on where that uh, where the object is, where the position is, and so on and so forth. Okay, so for the navigation bar hyperlinks, I'm going to say dot hashtag nav a and hashtag nav a visited, right? So if it's an active link or if it's a link that we have clicked before, we don't want the color to change there. What we're going to do is we're going to change the color to black for both. Um, there's no text decoration anyway. Font weight. We want it to be 600. Right, so it's a slightly bolder uh, display block. And then we want to add a border to it. So border is going to be two pixels solid black. You can experiment with any color you want. Okay, and then we want to do a border radius of 20 pixels with. 200 pixels. Okay. Uh, background color. Set it to white. Text align center. Okay. Let's do a height of 40 pixels. And then padding 10 pixels and margin 10 pixels. Okay. So that's, these are the properties for our. A navigation bar. So go ahead and refresh the page. So as you can see now, it looks slightly more like buttons on a website rather than just a list of text. Okay, I can actually click on them as well, and it changes to the pages that we want. Okay, and we'll get rid of the buttons from here in a minute. So now let's go and do the hover bit. Okay, so. Hashtag nav a dot hover. So anytime the mouse is over a button, we want the button's background to change, right? The background color is going to be yellow green. Okay. So anytime we're hovering over a button there, I refresh the page. So if I hover over it, it just changes the background of that link there for me. Okay. It should work on every page because the CSS is connected to each of them. Right, and what we also want to do is when I'm on the motherboard page, say for example, I want the motherboard button there to have a different color than the rest of them. Okay, so this in this case we're going to be using what's the class. So so far we've been identifying the um, ID through the uh, style sheet. So that's why we use the hashtag to identify an ID. But if you want to use the class, you have to use dot. So because this one here is a link we want to make sure we just affect that particular link to say a dot active right and we called the active before right so 
any of the links that's active so right now in this case the home page is active right i want the home page's background color to change background color um do a aquamarine we can just do that color yeah okay now um before when i did this let's try this before anyway you can see if it changes so as you can see it doesn't quite change um on the page right so this is where we're going to use something called important so basically i'm going to say before the semicolon there say important so what that means is like any rules that applied before this it's just going to override the rule and it's going to use this one okay so now if i go to the page right now i'm on the ram page i go to cpu i'm on the cpu page home contact us okay I hope that made a little bit more sense right so but this is not something that we should probably use a lot because you know otherwise it's going to start breaking your star sheet you just use it in the places where you need something to happen and otherwise it's not working okay let's go ahead and over the nav again this time i'm going to independent list items um i want to say list style none okay so that would get rid of these bullet points and i also want to get rid of the padding that's on the side there as well Okay, so hashtag nav again, the UL, padding zero. Okay, so each element in the HTML and HTML um, tags, uh, they do have their own padding margin and stuff like that, but HTML does allow us to override those rules as well. Okay, so right now, as you can see, the navigation bar has been uh, put into the right place. Okay, and all the contents are looking good. All right now for the content for the content part let's go ahead and call for content first and then in the content we're going to say minimum height um not minimum width minimum height i want it to be a hundred percent okay so the minimum height we want it to be a hundred percent and then we're also going to say float left so we want it to float left right after content as well yeah, so right now this is on float left. That's why the uh, nav bar has moved over there at the moment. Okay, and right after that, we're going to say padding. Uh, padding, I want to give it a 15 pixels padding, right? There's a nice padding inside of the box. And then we'll do a border left, one pixels solid black. Okay, so that's, there, there should be a nice line all the way through. So for now we're going to move on to the footer bit. Actually, we need to do the title as well. Um, let's do the title. So title here, title H2, the text align center. Gonna center that text, adding two pixels, and then we'll do margin zero pixels there. Okay, so let's see how it looks like. That would be there. Good. And then we also need to do the width, I believe, for the um, width for the content okay so for the width for the content we'll have to calculate 200 100 um, percent minus 250 pixels okay so we'll do width the calc so you can actually calculate that so that's 100 percent minus 250 pixels so what that would do then is our um content is going to be the 100 percent of the screen right but it's not going to go to the um go to the navigation bar okay so it's just going to be responsive just around here okay i'm going to get rid of that just to example okay so now we have done that let's go to the footer footer is going to be we're going to say clear both right so the clear both what it does is like any float um option that was used before that usually the content will follow the same style until we told it to clear uh, left so clear both will clear left and right because we haven't used right but i still prefer to use clear both because it's a lot simpler then right so what that will do then is basically create i say so you'll basically get out of the um loop so it's not going to be floating left with the content it's going to become its own independent div then okay and then we're going to say um 
white. We'll give it the one white of 30 pixels with with 100% uh, text align. We're gonna center the text, and then we'll do a padding of five pixels, so it's not like touching the border. And then we'll do, draw a board on the top, one pixel solid black. Okay. All right, so that's gonna be the bottom of the page, basically. So right now there's no content in this one, so that's why this is like stuck to this size because there's only content is that. But when we add more content to it, it will basically expand throughout the page. Okay. Um, I want to see if he actually changes it. If I change it to maybe pixels, say 2000, 2000 pixels or something. Let's see if he gets bigger. Oh, there we are. So, right now, as you can see here, it's gone much, much bigger right now. Right. And you'll probably notice that um, first problem here is that at the moment our background once the pages get longer our background will basically start um repeating itself so it will break off and then it'll start the pattern again right so the moment there's two two solutions to it. one is we can probably attach the color to the content box which is not going to be good because the content box is from here to here basically right so the rest of the website is going to look colorless and second one is we can fix the position for the background so it doesn't scroll with the page it just stays exactly where it is and i'll show you it's very easy to do so we just have to scroll to the top here underneath the bit where we actually put in the linear gradient on and say background attachment fixed okay so what that would do then is it's not going to scroll the background with the content the background stays exactly in the same position Okay, so although now we can scroll the page, as you can see, the color doesn't break anymore. So it looks nice and smooth, and you know it kind of works that way. Okay, so for whatever reason, the hundred percent didn't work, but we'll change the two thousand later on. So right now, because the pages are empty, it looks like that, but we'll change that after. So I'm just gonna leave that what it is for now, and then once we start adding content, we'll probably get rid of that. Okay, so I think the layout of the page is now done and we can start off with our adding content for the home page, motherboard, CPU, GPU, and their associated styles. Okay, I'm gonna reset that as well. Okay, so hopefully so far, um, I hope you've managed to follow it through. So basically, you know, when you're starting off on a website, it's basically like empty canvas. And we you know we can just add stuff to it, experiment with things. So don't be afraid to experiment with your own stuff. If you fancy um, doing something different with your navigation bars, your headers, your footers, the images, by all means, because uh, by doing stuff, you'll experience it firsthand and you remember it a lot more. All right, back to the index page. So right now we only have a div for the title in here and then the content. But we're going to need a lot more content than that. Okay, so I'm just going to hide this so it's more space for me to work with. The home page is going to have another box in here where we're going to display the images of the CPU, GPU, motherboard, and RAM, and then also have a little bit of a um, title underneath them. We're not going to link it to anything, but you can link that um, image as well. It will work exactly the same. And we also put a few paragraphs in here, and then lastly, we're going to add two videos to the uh, to the page, and I'll show you how to embed YouTube videos to a HTML page as well. Okay, so, so to start off, we're going to create a div here, and then we'll call this one, give it an ID of home underscore box, so we can identify that in the CSS later on. Inside of here, we're going to create one div and then we'll copy and paste it over. Give it a class called picks. Okay. All right, so we have got a home box div and then the picks class div. Okay. Inside the pics class div, I have a image. So I'm going to go to images and then probably do motherboard zero one and do an alt tag for motherboard image. Okay. And then after that, we'll do a P. P is for paragraph, right? So this will directly be placed underneath the image. Right? I'm just going to call this one motherboard. Let's see what this looks like here at the moment. Right now, you can see a motherboard picture has. Um, 
appeared here, right? So what we want to do is we want to create a CPU, GPU, RAM image here with the text underneath as well. And all of them should be nicely laid out in the middle here. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste this. So the second one is going to be a CPU 01 picture. So this is a CPU image. Okay, call it CPU. Then we have another one for GPU 01. GPU image. And then call this one GPU. Uh, this one's going to be RAM. Okay, RAM image. And then do the RAM here. Okay. Uh, if you notice, uh, it's not showing up the way we want it to because I want it to be in line, right? And obviously, uh, all the images to show up like in one line and smaller in the center here rather than covering the entire page. It's good to see that images are working. Okay, so to set that up, let's go to the styles sheet and then we'll scroll to the bottom here underneath the footer. Let's do our home box. Okay, so we'll call the home box ID home underscore box. Okay. And then we're going to do a width on this one first. So width is going to be 65%. Okay, and display block. Text align center. Border radius. We're going to give it 20 pixels. Okay, we can set a background color for you as well, just to see what it looks like. So we can say background color. We can change that up afterwards. Okay, antique white maybe. I mean, yeah, so we know what it looks like, so you can see the border radiuses are there as well. Okay, so then we're going to go after the picks. So basically picks are the independent classes, so we can um, target those. Okay, so you can say dot picks. So that's a div as well, it's not the image yet. Okay, and say so display inline block. So they're all in line, and then we're going to give it a margin of 5 pixels. So there's like a space between them. Okay. As you can see, it's all in line at the moment. We just make it smaller so they all four of them will appear uh, side to side. Okay. And then we'll do the dot pics image. So right now we're going into the pics div and then we are targeting the image tags. Okay. So we'll give it a height. Oh, here wait. Height of 177 pixels and width of 210 pixels. Okay. Border radius, we're going to give it border radius 10 pixels, so it's like round edged. And then we also give it a border of 1 pixel solid black border, like so. Okay. And there you go. So now they're all appearing nicely inside of the block. Okay, I think the uh, paragraphs are too high, oh sorry, too low. There's too much of a gap between them. Let's try and see if I can get that. So pigs, P, for the paragraph, say margin, max resolution, margin zero. Okay, so now it's a little bit better. All right, now we want to, basically center this entire div into the middle of the page right and that's a easy task to do so at the moment we have the home box div here so i'm just going to set the margin of that one to auto and that will basically calculate the margin left margin right top bottom and then it will center it right there okay so that looks good um, we can get rid of the background now and actually the border radius as well because it's not going to be able to see, be seen anyway so it's not going to matter and that looks nice and clean okay so perfect now let's go ahead and open the home page txt file all right and we're going to include all of this inside of the home page okay let's move that over here
Okay, so now uh, you just have to be careful not to be inside of the home box. So just make sure that you're outside of the home box div, right? And then from here, we can start adding our paragraphs. So to add the paragraphs, we just have to say P, okay? And then copy and paste the first paragraph inside of there. This is just basically like a welcome to the hardware website, your comprehensive guide to understanding essential components. All right, let's do another P here. And then the second paragraph. Okay, let's do the third P here. Third paragraph. And then we'll do the last one. This paragraph there. Okay, if I refresh that now, as you can see, the paragraphs are showing up with the P text. So anytime the P starts, you will write everything in one line um, for that duration of the P. And then once the paragraph tag ends, it will create a space before it starts the next one. That's why we use the paragraph tags because it organizes the text nicely on the, on the screen. Okay. And now we just need to add our videos and style those as well. Okay, so the video that we're going to be using is these two here. So explaining the desktop. PC hardware by explaining computers channel and also how do uh, computer hardware work by branch education. Uh, these are very informative and great videos. That's why I thought I'll uh, include them into the website. And it does add value to the context that we're going for here. So to add the um, add the videos to the web page, so I'm just going to select my first one. I'm going to click on share and then okay, copy all of this. So it's basically iframe iframe tag okay let's go back to our index page all right and before the end of the div we're going to basically make another div here right we're going to put our videos inside of that one so we want to have like a video container div right and we'll give this one a class called video container okay and inside of this one we'll create another div and then we'll call this one and give it an id oh sorry no this one is going to be a class as well, video. Okay, so classes we can use multiple times. And then I'm just going to simply copy paste that um, embed code in there. Okay, I'm going to do the same again. So I'll do the video again, uh, do a class, call it video. And then I'm going to copy and paste that second one, go to share, embed, copy that, and then paste it in there. Okay, so if I go to the website now and refresh the page, you should be able to see two of my videos there. Now, I don't really want it to be displayed like this. I want it to be displayed side to side and then with the borders and, you know, a little bit stylized rather than just this because it doesn't look like, it just looks like we just slapped it onto the site instead of, um, you know, any sort of thinking around it. Um, what we also can do here is we can create another H3 here called videos right just just above the videos one so it just gives it like a little title of the page to say videos there some reason my videos on top of the h3 and that's because i put it between the pages between the videos uh should go above the video container okay there you go so now it says videos so we have a h1 h2 and a h3 on the website great uh, let's go to the css and Style it out a little bit. Okay, scroll all the way to the bottom. Let's call the video container. So we're going to use the full stop or the period sign on the keyboard to call the classes, right? The video container. All right. And this one display block. We want it to be own independent div. And then text align to center. So everything that's in the, in the div is going to be centered. And then we also need to, um, then we actually also need to do the video class that we created as well. So this is the class for the container, and this is the class for the independent videos inside of the container. Okay, so say so dot video. All right, in here we're gonna say now we'll say width to 560 pixels. Right, that's the standard width, and height is 315 pixels. Okay, overflow hidden so anything that goes above so if a video is like you know a different aspect ratio 
whichever part is overflowing from the div, we just want to hide it. So we're going to keep the div height and width very strict. Okay, we're going to set a border to two pixels solid black, and then get a border radius of 10 pixels. So it's like nice round edged um, square. I get a margin of 20 pixels, so there's like enough room between the two. And then we also want to do a display to inline block. So similar to what we did to the Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter um, images, we're basically making sure that they are next to each other rather than um, on a single paragraph with each other. Okay, so if I refresh that now, as you can see, the pages actually look a lot better now because the videos have been embedded into the website and styled as well. Okay, so I think the page is okay. We have lots of empty spaces because we set the background to sorry, the height to 2000 pixels for the content before. I'm just going to set it to 100%. Then that would probably just work better. So as you can see, when the content is filled in, the page actually works exactly as it should. Okay. All right, so I think we're done with the home page now. Now we can move on to the motherboard. Uh, it's going to get a lot easier at the moment because we've done most of the CSS right now. Only bits and bobs that's left is to uh, with the display and the paragraphs and such. And that's not going to take very long. Okay, then. So let's start with the motherboard uh, page. So we're going to go into the content. And right after the title, now let's go ahead and make a new div for our images. So if you remember, the motherboard page started off with the three images on the top. Right. And so we're going to do the same thing, the similar thing that we've done with the, uh, the index page as well, right? So the three images that we put on before, uh, we'll do a similar thing to that. So what we can do is we can actually use the same ones, I believe. So I'm just going to call that one home box. Right there. Okay. So I'm going to give it an ID, probably home box here. All right. So then inside of the home box, what we usually have is an image and a paragraph. But instead of the paragraph, let's just have an image. Okay. So, mg. Yep. And then I'm just going to say uh, images motherboard one. Uh, okay. And then we'll do one more, two more, sorry. mg images motherboard two. We're leaving the alt blank for now. G images motherboard three. Okay. All right, so that's when I'm missing the pixel night here. Let's see. Okay, let's do the div here. Plus X and then let's do that over there. I'll get rid of these two. And then I can just copy and paste that over. Okay, so have it once and then twice. It's much more readable and symmetrical as well. Okay, so I'm going to change that one to two and change that one to three. Okay, so we're still using the similar style that we set up in the index page. So I called it home box and then picks, 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 and then basically just putting them inside of the div, right? And putting the image tag inside of the div as well. Right, let's go to the motherboard. As you can see, now the pictures are showing up, similar style to the way it was there. So CSS makes it a lot easier for us to reuse a lot of the styles we might have created in the style sheet. So if you go to the folder again now, let's go to the motherboard and let's add the bits for the motherboard. Now, um, these are paragraphs here. This is a paragraph, but this here is a list. Okay, and I'll show you how to include that as well. So when we're copying that part, I'll show you how to include that as a list. Okay, so let's go ahead and include our first paragraph. Outside of the home box, so I'm just going to leave the home box there. Okay, and I'm going to go to a P and oh, I need to wrap this so this is our first pass uh first paragraph pass okay this is our first paragraph then we have our second paragraph here and p again with the second paragraph now we need to do the list 
Okay, so in this case, we use uh, we've used a unordered list before. You can also use an ordered list, which is an OL. Basically, that means it's going to come up with numbers, right? Uh, UL is usually with shapes, but OL are with numbers. I'll show you how that works now. So different motherboards are. Your first one is an ATX. It's a full size motherboard. Secondly, we go to LI again. You have micro ATX. It's something slightly smaller than your normal ATX, but still offering lots of good, good value. Then we have the mini ATX, which is on the mini desktop computers, but they don't have lots of PCI slots for expansions. Okay. All right, and then oh, I'm putting the P inside of the instead. Sorry. So these are the three there. And if I refresh the page now, as you can see, it says uh, motherboards come in various shapes and sizes, designed to fit different types of computers and serve different purposes. Here are some common types. And then you got your three there. So we used UL for the navigation bar, which is just for users' bullet points. And then we're using OL for the information here, which gives us your one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. I'm not going to style that very much because it does exactly what it's supposed to. So that's great. And then we move on to the next bit about socket compatibility. That's a paragraph. So we'll put the socket compatibility as well. That's quite important. So if you're changing your CPU, a later stage of your computer, it's always the best idea to check for compatibility with the chipset. So for example, if it's Intel, which version of Intel and so on and so forth. So good to know. Okay, so I think that would do for the motherboard page really. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our images there. We have our home page done. Motherboard uh, page is now done as well. So once you have the main style sheet done, rest of it actually becomes a lot easier. Let's do the CPU, GPU, and RAM. So this one is going to get interesting as well because we'll have to set the rules for the blocks. And once we set the rules for the blocks, then we can just copy and paste the information in. Okay, let's start off with the CPU one first, I believe. So what we're going to do is we're going to be basically creating a class um, inside of the div, but we're going to basically put two classes into the same div so we can change the rules around afterwards. As you can, as you saw in the demo before, the GPU page had the images on the right and the CPU had the images on the left, so did the RAM. So we can use a CSS trick to actually make that work without having to recreate stuff over and over again. And let me show you how it's done. I'm going to create a div here first, give it a class, right? So we'll call it blocks. Now we're also going to do a space and then say left. So in this particular example, all of the images are going to be placed on the left hand side inside of each block, and the text is going to be on the right hand side. Okay. So okay, let's go with the image first, and then I'll do Im images, then CPU 01. It's fine. And then we can do our paragraph here. I'm just going to open the uh, CPU paragraph first. Okay, what is a CPU? Okay, so this one, we just uh, wrap the text around. And then let's move on from here. Okay, so I've done one paragraph. It's basically saying what is a CPU. And then it's moving on from that one. I think that one needs to be in a separate one. So that this part here is a paragraph and this part here is a different paragraph. Okay, so if I go to the CPU page now, as you can see, the image is showing up and the paragraph is showing up there as well. Great. Okay. And then second bit is, so whenever we're going to use a second block, right? We just use another another one here. Uh, div as blocks left. And then we'll do image again. Image is this time is CPU two. Okay, and then we will. I think I'm missing a paragraph here. So there's two paragraphs into that one. Okay, there you go. So there's that question there, and then there's two paragraphs of that one there. So it should look like this. Right now we've got the second image showing up as well. That's great. Okay, 
and then we'll do a paragraph here. Oop. Not the edge. No, let's just ask the question what does the CPU do? And then we can copy the first paragraph underneath that one. Okay, and then we'll do the second paragraph as well. Okay, so this is inside of the second block that's called blocks, uh, blocks left. Okay, and then we'll do the last block. Divs as blocks left. Okay, so we're still inside of that one now. AMG images CPU number three now, and then we'll do the first paragraph is going to be called technologies, and then we should have three paragraphs in this one. The paragraph number one, paragraph number two, and then paragraph number three. Okay, so we have our images and our information on the page. Okay, so now just to style it up, let's go on to the CSS style sheet and we can scroll all the way to the bottom again, end of the video, and then let's go and add our blocks here. So first of all, we start off with the blocks. So notice that I don't have to say blocks then space left because when we use the space in the name of the class, seeing it as two classes in the same div. So blocks left um, dot blocks and dot left are seen as two separate classes at the moment, right? And we can style them both. Okay. So under the blocks, we're gonna say width to a hundred percent margin. And pixels so there's like between the blocks there should be some um some space adding to 10 pixels as well border radius to 10 pixels okay and border to one pixel solid black okay and then we we'll set a position to relative because we need to uh, move the images to an absolute position similar to what we did with the facebook twitter and linkedin images okay so set the width, margin, padding, border radius, and position. Let's go refresh that. Let's see what it looks like at the moment. As you can see, even though they're the same blocks, they are positioned nicely, and there's also a little gap between them, so it looks nice. All right, now we need to move the image here and then text over here. Let's start with the image first. So dot left img. So any so any div that has a class of left. And there's an image inside of it. What we want to do is we're going to set the position of the image to absolute. Okay. And then we're going to move it to uh, say top 50%. Oh, not 50 pixels, top 50%. So what that does is it will move the image to the middle of that um, block right now. So this is the block, the height of the block at the moment. So it's calculating the middle. It's calculating from the top of the image. Okay. So we're calculating from the top of the image there. So what we can do at the moment is we can use something called a transform translate to move the image back into position. Okay, so we can say transform, translate, translate y. So we just want the y position, the minus 50%. Okay, so instead of calculating from the top, now it's going to calculate from the whole body of the image. That way then now the image is positioned in, inside of the box and we just need to resize the image. So it displays nicely inside of the box. All right. That's what we're going to do now. So left image, left image, sorry, blocks image. On that to apply to all the images inside the blocks. Okay. The width, um, 300 pixels. We'll give it a set height as well to 200 pixels. Border radius to 10 pixels. Okay. As you can see now, it's fitted in nicely. With the vertical alignment done to it, all right? And we just remove the um, information towards the right, and then it should all look nice. Okay, so after that's done, say left, then P. So that's the paragraphs that we put in there, right? So all the paragraphs, I want to have the margin left, that to say, because the width is 300, so I want to say 310 pixels. The 10, 310 pixel works perfectly fine. The images are there and the information is showing up nicely as well. Okay, and that's literally all we need to do for the CPU page. Okay, and if you go to the GPU page, 
So GPU page, the images are going to be in the opposite direction. And that's actually quite easy as well. Let me show you how that's done. Okay, so once again, we're back inside of the content div. And let's go ahead and open the GPU text file. So we know what we're putting in there. So in the GPU text file, you have what is GPU? What does the GPU do? What are these? Uh, what are GPUs used for? Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste those into the HTML. All right, so similar task again. We're going to call div class blocks. And this time it's going to be right. Okay. Unless uh, I want to reduce my typing. So what I can do here is go one, go two. Yeah, we'll do two for now. And then last one is to add one more. So I'm just going to copy this skeleton. So I don't have to uh, keep typing it up again. So once, twice. Okay. So here, I've got my images, GPU one. First question is what is a GPU? Then I have first paragraph. Oops, goes out of bounds. Then I have my second paragraph there. Okay. I just need to add a little more here. I'm just pasting it. That's so, all right. So I've got done my first block and then um, blocks right. Okay, so I've got the GPU, I've got the question with the answer. Okay, let's do the second bit there. Okay, I'm going to go here and say images. Oops, say uh, GPU. This time it's going to be GPU 2. All right, and then here's my question. Answers here. One. There's the second one. Just pasting in there. Okay, and if I go to GPU now, as you can see, that although you know we didn't write any style sheets anymore, it's still working just as well. Okay, the last picture we haven't assigned yet. Okay, picture here, images slash GPU, GPU three. Okay, and then is the question. I have three paragraphs here, so I'm gonna and paste that one here. Let's go this one. And then the last one here. Okay. Now I've got all three working just fine. Okay, great. So now off to the CSS. Okay, so we've done the left, the similar way that we did the left IMG, we can also do the right IMG as well. So we can say right IMG, for example, right? So in this case, it's going to be position to the right. Okay, so we can say position absolute again. Okay, and we need to add right five pixels. So it's five pixels to the right of the screen. Up 50% again. Up. 60%, 50%, and then we'll do the translate transform y to minus 50%. So the image is scaled to the position. Okay, and then we'll also do the right paragraphs. So the, each of the paragraphs on the right block, margin right, is going to be 320 pixels. Okay. So let's refresh that. So as you can see now, uh, with very little changes, we're able to move things around quite nicely. Okay, so now we'll do the last one to copy and paste the RAM. Okay, once again, so this is the information of the RAM. Okay, that's fine. And we're just going to copy and paste their section into the page. Do the RAM. Once again, I'm going to make the skeleton. I'll say div class blocks. This one is left. Okay, and then I have the IMG, and then I'll do the paragraphs as well. And I think three is okay for this one. I'll copy and paste it a couple of times. One, two, great. Now with the first one, 
Images RAM one. Then we to what is RAM? Okay. And let me just wrap that text here. Okay, so I'm still pasting inside in between the paragraphs, right? Okay, it's still inside of the div as well. Right, let me just Okay, and then the paragraph is here. And the images, I want to say images RAM 2. Okay, and then let's go ahead and paste over here. Paste this one. Yeah, okay, so this all look good there. Last one images RAM 3. Is the question in here? Okay, great. So now the RAM page should be done as well. Okay, so as long as the blocks are there, that's perfectly fine. And uh, one of the other thing you can do is if you want to say, for example, I want the middle one to be on the right and then those be on the um on the left, right? We can also go ahead and change that too. So say in the RAM page, I want the middle one to be right. Okay, so that's the middle one. So instead of blocks left, I can just change that to right. And then I go to RAM page, you see it changes between that. I think I like that as well. It's quite nice. I think I just change one of them in the middle to them. The right. The middle one instead of being all right, I just change that to left. CPU. This is the middle one. Change that to right. Okay. So there you go. It makes it look a little bit better. And also because we wrote all the CSS rules ourselves. We know exactly how to make changes if we need to and also you know we can add more stuff if you want to more pages it would also look better okay okay so last page to do is contact us all right let's go back into the visual studio code and finish that as well so, all right now I'm back in the content. All right, so here we're gonna do a div. I'm gonna call it um class container. So it's gonna contain all of the form stuff inside. Okay, form. We just do the form here. Okay, now notice the form tag comes with action. So if you are publishing this website somewhere and you have a web host. You probably will have like an email dot PHP file or something like that. That's going to basically take the information from this form and then send it using the uh, SMTP protocol from the server. Or you can alternatively use other services that gives you the source code to actually create use their services instead of using a server. Okay, so we're not going to be using a PHP script to send an email to ourselves uh, from the contact page in this tutorial, but I might do a tutorial in the future to cover that. Let me know in the comments if that is something that you want for your projects. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to put in a hashtag inside of the actions so it doesn't really do, it won't really do anything. Okay, all right, so it's time to put in some labels. So let's put a label in here. So for call it f name so first name or full name or first name say name here okay and then we'll do input all right so input type is going to be text we're going to give it an id of f oh, id and the f name and then just say name Name. So just in case you want to use it on a script or something like that, you are going to need a name tag for that to identify which input value to send. Okay. And then we'll also do a placeholder. So placeholder text is basically just uh, something that shows up on the box. So I'll say enter your name here. Okay. And if I go and refresh the page, as you can see, it just shows up as that's so a name. And then there's a placeholder. Once you type something, it disappears. Okay, and we'll make it look better with the CSS a little bit later on. So no, I wrap the text around so then it doesn't go horizontal. 
Okay, let's make some more. All right, so second one is going to be label again. This one is for email. So L email. And then we're going to say email address. It's always a good idea to know who's sending you the emails and then, you know, um, how to respond back to them. Okay, and then we're going to do input here. All right, I will say ID L email. So label for the email. Uh, or ID, just email is fine. Actually, this one is the input. Okay, and then name email and then placeholder we're going to say enter your email okay and then we just leave some dots there last one is for the message so label again for subject no oh, sorry so for message okay uh, message here i probably should put a colon then a space looks better then no one just the one okay and then we can put input again now type is text actually it's not input it's going to be text area this time yeah because we want a bigger box id message and then name message and then obviously we need a placeholder as well placeholder oh, there's no space between there placeholder enter your message okay so now uh with our text box um okay so now with our form done uh, let me just explain what this is so the moment we created a form label and then inside of there we've got label input for two of them and then we got a label and text area for the last one because that's going to be the bigger part of the contact form Okay, and at the moment we can actually go ahead and put our styles in there to make things look nice. And we also need a one last thing actually, which is going to be the button to submit stuff. So we're going to say input type submit value submit. Okay, and then now we should show up a submit button there. So when you click on it, you'll see that something changes on the um, just bar here, right? But obviously it's not going to do anything because it's not programmed to do anything okay right, so let's go to our style sheet let's go to right at the bottom okay so for the container let's go and container first for the class so this is where the form is right so we're going to give a border radius of say five pixels first okay do it 10 pixels okay and then we'll do padding of 20 pixels Um, yeah, it's a bit padded. Fine. Okay, we can give it a background as well. Actually, since we know, we don't want to give it a background, so probably no need for a border radius. Okay. All right, let's go to do the input. Now, inside of here, we're going to say type oh, is equals to text. So we want all the inputs basically right so input input both of them okay and we also want to get the text area as well okay area as well and we also do select so whenever something is selected right so whenever any of these items are selected we can change the styles as well okay let's go and do a width of a hundred percent okay padding 12 pixels border one pixel solid and then click on okay. a bit of a grayish isn't it yeah it's fine we change the after border radius five pixels um let's go margin top Um, six pixels there. Margin bottom, sixteen pixels, and then resize vertical. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Uh, it looks like this at the moment. 
Okay, so when it's selected, you can see the border is showing up on there. Okay, and when it's not selected, it's not really doing anything else. So it's just that's what we're doing. Okay, and last thing we want to do is I'm going to change the button as well. That button looks a bit too standard there. Okay, so we're going to do type was to submit. So that's the button we after. Okay, background color. Um, what color did I use before? Used a zero four AA six B. Like a green color, I think. Yeah. Color white. So that's the text for the uh, text color. And we'll do padding um, 12 pixel left and 20 pixel for top right. Okay. Um, border none. Border radius 5 pixels. Cursor pointer. So it changes the cursor for us as well. Right now it just changes to mouse, but then when I refresh the page, it changes to a pointer. Right, and then I think what I would also like to do is with the text area, I want a height of 200 pixels. So it's slightly bigger. So then it's uh, whenever somebody's writing a message or anything like that, you can actually read it on the screen. Okay, I think we did it. Um, we've done our website. So we've done our homepage with all the images and the videos, explanations, uh, motherboard page with reusing some of the stuff so just a quick example that you don't have to you know create everything over and over again you can reuse stuff that you've done before um cpu gpu ram pages actually turned out quite nice as well and you know as you can see once again we're using the css that we've done and we can create a dynamic and different designs depending on what we're doing and lastly doing a contact us page now that the website is finished, let's go ahead and publish this website using GitHub pages. So if you don't know what GitHub is, uh, GitHub is basically a code repository website where you can upload your code into, you can do version control, you can have uh, other people to collaborate with you as well. And one of the main ways a lot of students use uh, GitHub is also to build a portfolio of projects that they have worked with, which helps them during job interviews or just to keep track of the projects that they're currently working on. Um, it does help tremendously. And also there's a new feature on the GitHub called GitHub Pages, where you can upload your HTML, CSS files on and then have them posted directly onto GitHub without needing a, uh, another web server where you have to set up your FTP domain and so on. Uh, let me just quickly show you how uh, github pages work and we're just going to basically go over some of the basics where you can host your website and uh, see it through different browsers so i'm not logged in this browser at the moment this is just to show you the github homepage. Uh, to get started uh, just click on sign up and then sign up using a email and a password and once you've done that you should be able to you should be able to sign in and see the same screen as me okay so i'm logged into here at the moment so as you can see, this is my GitHub repository. I have lots of C-sharp projects in here. Uh, we're going to create a new repository where we're going to upload our HTML and CSS pages. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and click on Create New. Go to Click New Repository here. And then I'm going to name this uh, repository Hardware Website. Okay. And it'll tell you whether the hardware website name is uh, available. Okay. A Simple hardware. Simple. Uh, just gonna add a description here. Computer hardware website made with HTML and CSS. Okay, so we're gonna leave that one as public. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna add a README file so that way I can link the video and also give some information about what this project was, uh, just in case somebody wants to say, for example, uh, take a look at the repository or even to copy it and so on okay uh, choose a license we're just going to leave it as none because it's a very basic project i'm going to click on create repository okay so straight after my repository here is done um, i can now edit 
uh, some of the files that's in here at the moment it's only got the readme.md file i'm gonna go ahead and edit this file here so that way the um the page looks better so to re uh, rewrite the header here so it starts with a hashtag no it's very small okay let me just zoom in so you can see better okay and i'm just going to basically say here a simple computer hardware website okay once i've done that i can click on commit changes okay you can extend it as well if you need to but i've not really done much changes to this one so it just changes it there i might i might add some more information to it uh, a little bit later on once the project is a bit more done okay so to set up our github uh, pages first what i need to do i need to go to settings Okay, settings while you're in the repository. So I'm in the hardware website repository. Okay, go to settings, pages. And now in, inside of here, it says deploy, build and deployment. So it says deploy from branch, which is fine. So I think what well, first what we need to do is we need to upload our pages to the um, repository first, and then we can enable that afterwards. Let me just go back to code again. Okay. And then you'll see a bit that says add file on the top. Okay, I'm gonna click on upload files. I can drag and drop the files in here. At the moment, we have all of these files, everything except for the VS code when I can delete that. Oh, I can delete that folder because that just was created by the VS code. And I'm also gonna delete the zip file which I downloaded from the website to make the uh, make this website. Okay, so right now I have my txt folder, which I also don't need uh, because that's just to uh, add the information to the pages. I can also delete that. So the files I'm going to need is the images folder, which has all the images that we need for the website, these web pages, and the style.css file. Okay, I can select all of them and then drag and drop it onto this section here. You just have to wait for all the files to be uploaded. Now, notice although I've uh, dragged and dropped a folder, GitHub would automatically go ahead and make a folder and place those images inside of that folder. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna make some comments here to say web files uploaded. Nothing else needed. Commit changes. It's going to process our files and display it onto the repository. Okay, so right now I have all the files I need in the repository here. You can click on the files there and it will open it in the code view. So you can take a look at what was done. You can also edit it if you want to and save it again and it will work the same. Okay, let's go to settings now. Okay, let's go to pages. And then source is fine. Deploy from a branch, which is fine. And then the branch that we after is going to be main. Okay, I'm going to click on main. From the root is fine and click save. Okay, what this is going to do is it's going to take a couple of minutes for your web domain to show up. Okay, so once it's done, it should show up on your um, on your main one. Basically, it's going to give you the address as well that you can use in order to access the website. Okay, so we just have to wait a couple of minutes in order for the deployment to show up. Okay, so when you go back to your main code repository, you'll see on this side. This shows deployment, right? And then it says GitHub pages. So if I click on that for now, it will tell you that your website has now been deployed and you can access it through this address here. So if I open the right click and open the website there, there you go. Now the website has been hosted online. Okay, we've got the icons, uh, the links are working, all the pages, pictures are working as well. It seems to work just fine. Now I can copy this address now from here. Let me try in Firefox. Okay, so here I'm not logged into my GitHub, so I can check. And this is my local one. So as you can see here, it says C YouTube and basic web tutorial. Okay, I can now paste the web address, which is muict.github.io and then slash hardware website. Okay. As soon as I go there, now the website is successfully posted on github pages
Okay, then hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial where we went ahead and created a um, website ourselves. And then in the end, we have uploaded it now and published it using GitHub pages. Uh, you can use the similar process for your website, right? And obviously, if you do update your website and such, you can always go back and add new files to the repository when you need to. Okay, the file will work exactly the same way. If you need to edit it or delete it, you can do the same way as well. If you found this tutorial useful, please leave a like and a subscribe. And I will see you on the next tutorial. Take care.